Well, good day, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. I'm excited today. I'm super excited because when I was a little kid, one of the big things that I look forward to every year was my grandpa was a member of the Elks Club, and he would go and buy tickets for the Cincinnati Reds games one day every year from the Elks, and then he would take my sister, my grandmother, and I all to a game together. And today, I bought us all tickets, and I'm taking my sister and my grandpa to the game. Now, my grandpa said, you know Ohio in the summer, don't get me any field seats because I'll roast out there. So, I got us a level above field seats right behind home plate. I hope he enjoys this. He has been a Reds fan since he was less than 10. So, this should be a blast to go to a game with him. He's all dressed up for it. You guys are going to love it. Days with Jordan the Lion, my grandpa, my sister, Great American Ballpark and the Cincinnati Reds begins now. Don't worry about this guy. He's going to my mom's house today. She just got a new five-week-old puppy collie, and he's going to go play with the new puppy today. And we dropped Scott Michaels off the airport, so he's gone too. Ready for a baseball game or what, Papa? Oh, I'm ready to go. When was your very first baseball game? As a Cincinnati Reds fan, I know you started listening to him in the 30s, but... 1938. After Johnny Vandenberg pitched his double no-hitter, I became a fan of the Reds. For life. Yeah. Let's go see a win. He's pre-gaming. There's the park. You can see it says rounding third and heading for home. Cincinnati Reds. That was our old announcer, Joe Nuxall's famous saying... Now we're crossing the bridge into the stadium right over here on the other side. This one is hands down my favorite park in Major League Baseball so far. And this is not the park I grew up going to. We grew up going to Riverfront. This was built in, I think 2000. It's a beauty. They've got some of the history of the original teams up here. The early, early days. And a lot of statues to players from the Big Red Machine. There's Joe Morgan. One of my all-time favorite Reds. And then over here is Pete Rose, which I showed this when we did the, uh, we found Pete Rose's home in Cincinnati. You can see all these kids playing around Pete. I think my grandpa is wandering off to find his brick. We have a brick here with his name on it. There's Pete. Charlie Hustle. Then my favorite player up there, Joey Votto up on the wall. He's had a great season. Mr. Redlegs here. And then over here, some of the kids are posing with the doggy, Tony Perez. Another member of the Big Red Machine. I would expect before the end is said and done, all the Reds from the Big Red Machine will have a statue. I always love coming into here. It's just such a beautiful park. And I think has the coolest name for a ballpark, Great American. Even though that's a company name, it's named after the Great American Insurance Group. Look, they've got statues all over. Even up in here we haven't seen yet, so. Lots and lots of history displayed here at the park. I think he found his brick. So check out the statues over here. We have one of Ted Klazuski right there at the entrance. Big Ted, the first baseman, number 18. And then this is really great. This is one of our favorites. My grandpa loves to check this out because the catcher here was one of his favorite players, Ernie Lombardi. They called him the Schnoz, Ernie Schnoz Lombardi. My grandpa said he was one of the slowest runners, but he could hit. He could have had one of the greatest careers of any catcher and did have a great career. If he could have just ran a little faster, he would have got more out of his hits. And then Frank Robinson, who we just saw a statue of in 
Cleveland, of all places, for his management. They have him right there. And then our former broadcaster, the great Joe Nuxall, the old left-hander, as they called him. And he's the one that would end every broadcast by saying, heading around third and heading for home. This is the old left-hander saying good night. He made his major league debut during the war at the age of 13. And then he was our beloved commentator and all, all on all of our Kroger's commercials here in town when I was growing up. So now, let's head on into the park. Take a look. I love those murals. I want to check those out. But look right here in the dead center. As soon as you walk in, established in 1869, the Cincinnati Reds. America's first professional baseball team. And here is George Wright, the original professional Cincinnati Red stockings. And this is what's so confusing to me when I was in the Braves stadium. They claim George Wright is part of their history and that they're the first professional team. So I don't know where that comes from. And then over here, the great Big Red Machine. Look at this. I love it. I can name them all. Number 20, Cesar Geronimo. 15, George Foster. 13, Davy Concepcion. Pete Rose. Joe Morgan. Johnny Bench. Tony Perez. Ken Griffey Sr. And they're forgetting Sparky Anderson. I can't believe it. But the manager was the great Sparky Anderson. No batting practice today, but it's a nice, calm day. My grandpa was worried about us being out in the heat. We're expecting a high of 80 today. All right, well, it looks like we got pretty good seats down here. So I got a section 25. So we're actually right down here. Not bad. Today is going to be a Reds Detroit Tigers game. So as soon as we sat down, they wiped off our seats for us and said, you guys have access to the Scouts Club, so go wander in there and take advantage of it. So I'm seeing some history down here, some historic photos, gold glove presentations, and then this is a good place to escape the heat. So if poor Papaw starts getting toasted, we'll bring him in here and sit him down in here, and you have access to an entire concession stand in here. Pretty cool, then a full bar, a little bit of everything. I should surprise him with one of those. Papa requested a hot dog and a water when we came in here, so we'll do that and then hit a uh, merch booth to get a shirt. It's so cool that now, as I'm an adult, I get to do the same thing for my grandpa that he used to do for me when I was a kid. Bring us to the ballpark and get him a hot dog. There he is. There you go. They're not doing batting practice, but uh, a couple of the players are out here just kind of swinging away and doing a little fielding practice for some of the guys in the outfield. Not an official batting practice though. Take a look at this. Whenever the Reds hit a home run, those big stacks out there, it's a bunch of baseball bats. They'll blow fireworks out of those. That's always a fun one. I love that. So this is the fan zone area over here. They have all kinds of stuff for kids to do. And right across from us is the Reds Team Store slash Reds Hall of Fame, which I will vlog someday. It is one of the most amazing Hall of Fames I've ever been in. Some fun photos with Rosie Red and Mr. Redlegs. Here's the Hall of Fame merchandise. Let's check this out. That's where I grew up going to the games. Tara and I went to our first games at Riverfront. Here you can buy some old seats. I'm gonna do one of these. You spin this and you win a bobblehead for 10 bucks. Let's do it and see who we get just for the heck of it because this was my former personal trainer in LA before I left, Glenn Braggs. I want Glenn Braggs. All right, I went ahead and paid 20 for three spins because they have a microphone that looks pretty cool, all kinds of different ones that look pretty cool, so let's do it. Tony Perez. One away from Glenn Braggs, can you believe it? Come on, Glenn Braggs. Al Morris. Come on, Glenn Braggs. It accidentally moved. 
looked over here by the Reds bus, we noticed this. This is relatively new because we've never noticed it. This memorial for the old 1869 team, I have never seen this thing out here before, ever. Very cool. All right, we didn't even make it in the team store yet and I've already ended up with a bag full of stuff. That was nice of him to uh, let me get the Glenn Braggs instead of George Wright. All right, well now we're going to the team shop because I saw a really cool Ken Griffey Jr. and Senior shirt and another one that I want. This one, no joke, is like three floors high and when I was a kid, I used to save my money all summer for when we would come here for games so I could buy stuff here. Check these out. I was a big fan of the Nasty Boys, but this is the one I'm gonna buy for sure. Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. And then look, I was just telling my sister that Chris Sabo is now a coach for the University of Akron. So the Griffey shirt that I want, they don't have in my size. They only have it in small and medium, so I might get Castellanos. He's great. And as you could tell, I already had my hat. Look at that, that's a giant trophy from the 1990 series. That's when they beat the Oakland A's. Now they're getting the field ready. And then up here you can see all the retired numbers. Of course, 42 for Jackie Robinson. And then a lot of historic players up here. Johnny Bench, Frank Robinson, Joe Morgan. They've got the black slash across because he passed away this year. Ted Klazuski, Tony Perez. Then you've got the announcers, Marty Brenneman up there, Joe Nuxall. And it is familiar to some of our fans. We all know this. It's an annual biopic. Even though we have the Scout Club, there's all kinds of other cool food in the park, and I'd rather have some of that than just a regular old hot dog. Let's see what they got. Here's the game used memorabilia room. Let's check that out on the way. Game used jerseys, game used bats, game used balls. I've never actually seen them note the play that it was. That's really crazy. So you see how quick bat. There's a Homer Bailey bat. And over here is the Frisius big boy, not Bob's big boy. Here in Ohio we call it a Frisius. The difference here is that instead of the red relish, they used tartar sauce. Another popular place is the Penn Station. Philly cheesesteak type sandwiches, Porkopolis, and then of course, famous La Rosa's, which I'll probably have, La Rosa's Pizza down here. And there's another Cincinnati favorite that I love, Skyline Chili. It's chili spaghetti or chili cheese dogs. Right here, they're doing the pregame show, and the guy here on the right, just a couple years ago, was one of our pitchers, Sam LaCure. And if you look up here, they have displayed a couple of the newspaper articles from when we were champions. That is La Rosa's. I think we're gonna get that. I think we're going for the pepperoni today. They also serve this same kind in Kings Island, our amusement park here in Cincinnati, so that's where I used to have it also as a kid. There's our pepperoni and our Coke. All right, it's about game time. Everybody's standing up because the World War II veteran is going to throw out the first pitch. All right, Henry! Oh my god, this pizza is so good. The short stop. First pitch of the game. We ain't gonna miss. We ain't gonna miss. Take a seat. Thank you, thank you. Goodbye. Number six. Keep 
screws. Is that one making you nervous, Papal? That was a can of corn. <laughs> a bar that big Cincinnati structure here you can see more of the fan zone little kids park here now we're out here in the outfield I want to show you the back of the park see from the back of the park you can actually see the river and the river boats and everything see there's a couple of them out there right now And that's the bridge over there from WKRP in Cincinnati when they're shooting the American flag on top of it. Now here's a view into the Detroit Tigers bullpen. And then out here is the all you can eat section, but they also call this the riverboat deck because they built this little riverboat wheel out here in the back of the park. And then for years they have had different trucks up there and if a Cincinnati Red is picked to hit this sign with a home run, a lucky fan wins in that car. And it has happened before. And then from here if you go straight down in front of those seats, that's where the Reds bullpen is. Here's our foul pole view while they're sweeping the field in between innings. All right, back to our seats. Time to shoot off t-shirts out of that big monster. Are cannons. Oh yeah, they're shooting them now. Come on, Castellanos.
What do you got there? You didn't bring anybody else one? Unbelievable. Even eating out of a helmet. By himself one. You know what happened? He tried to pay cash and they don't. He tried to pay cash and they said they wouldn't accept cash. So the guy felt bad. The guy felt bad for me. So I'll pay for it. So it was like a. Yeah, it was only about a fifteen dollar Sunday. Somebody bought his Sunday for him. Unbelievable. He's got out of this entire day for free. Oh yeah, the entire day. <laughs> he said it pays to be old. That was a pretty bad inning. They scored three runs, Detroit did. I tried to show them to you, but every time a play would happen, someone would walk right in front of the vision of the ball so you didn't get a skinny of it. <laughs> ah. All right, Tigers are bringing in a relief pitcher. And here he comes. All those strikeouts don't help when we can't score a run. Singing God Bless America. God bless America. Stevenson for the pitcher. Hopefully he can get something started because we're not gonna see any home run fireworks otherwise. Rally time! Number 37, Tyler Stevenson.
Captain. All right, Castellanos. here I don't know last inning bottom of the ninth the last pitcher they brought in my grandpa does not particularly care for because he blows every game and he just did pretty good my grandpa said well he does pretty good when the game doesn't mean anything <laughs> No, definitely not playing like a playoff team. Very likely our last batter. My grandpa just said, why don't you go get the car? <laughs> Got some family time. Tigers won it without Miguel Cabrera. Despite the loss, Papa, did you have a good time? Yes, I did. You've seen a lot of losses, so it probably wasn't the first for you. I've seen more losses than I have wins. <laughs> That's all she wrote here for Great American Ballpark today. Well, I had fun regardless. Always do. Later on, old left-hander. Goodbye, Pete Rose. Could have used you today. I see two wild monkeys coming towards me. There's one wild monkey. Hi. Where are you at? Where are you? You're behind me. Where are you? Hi. And hi! Hi, Callie. Hi! Aww! Look at you. Aww. Little Collie. Little Callie May. They've been out there wrestling. You were? Did she bite your tail? She did, didn't she? She's already spoiled. There she goes. Go get her, bud. What are you doing? Who's going to get who first? Yeah. <laughs>